Let's show some Axis love for one of our own. It's Mr. LaRue. Come on, you have to clap twice as hard. Go on. Uh, this is, I'm just going to do a very, very quick plug. This is actually part of the course that I'm currently doing, the Web Standards and Accessibility course. I've taken out just the, a little bit of the accessibility that we do on one of the days in the course, just kind of present that to you guys, to kind of top line some of the topics that are important, specifically important to businesses. So I'm going to really start off by kind of asking you guys, what is web accessibility? What does kind of web accessibility mean to you guys as businesses? Not getting sued. No, it means more than that. If, you, if you're into creating a, an accessible website, what does that necessarily mean? It means everybody can access it. It means everybody can access it. What she said, inclusive. Make it inclusive. Make it inclusive. It means the public sector in particular will like your tenders. Nice. Potentially, yes. Anyone else? Not getting sued. <laughs> It means that you've got to put a lot more thought into how you get the website together. You guys know a little bit too much about this. Uh, what I get usually on the courses, people say, to, I said to you, okay, right, go away for, go away for uh, two or three minutes, sit together with somebody, discuss together what does web accessible web design mean, and literally every single time, every person in the group will say to me, it's about making websites for blind people. <laughs> That's it. it okay. Not? No, it's not. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's really, it isn't. It's not about making websites for dumb people. It is about making websites more accessible to everybody, which is what Joyce said. Uh, keeping in mind that everybody includes people with disabilities like, okay, one, yes, blindness, which is a visual disability, but blindness ranges from everything from just blurry, having blurry vision, color blindness, tunnel vision, to full, full blown blindness. We also then have obviously uh, auditory disabilities, hearing disabilities, we have physical disabilities, things like RSI, tremors, uh, we have speech disabilities, cognitive disabilities. Dyslexia is a cognitive disability. A lot of people actually struggle with reading websites because they suffer from dyslexia. So as uh, somebody is looking at accessible web design, we're also taking into, into consideration people who have things, uh, uh, difficulties reading, uh, diff difficulties with memory loss, neurological issues, uh, seizure disorders, and that sort of thing. That all comes under the kind of, I've got all of the rain. You do, actually, yeah. From experience, <laughs> I know. And funnily enough, the websites you design are crap when it comes to accessibility. So you should actually be a fantastic web designer. Probably yeah. Okay, not only when it comes to accessible web design are we talking about disabilities, we're also talking about other groups of people as well. The elderly or older people, what's the official term? It's not the elderly. The older person. The older person also has potentially some of the issues that we've seen on the previous slide, but sometimes a collection of those issues. And accessible web design basically helps us create websites that are more accessible. <laughs> uh, Looking at the current aging UK population, we're talking probably in the next, I don't know, five or 10 years, about 15%, potentially 15% of the UK population is covered by that term. We're also talking about users that potentially aren't fluent in English. So making accessible websites potentially help users, foreign users, help with foreign investment, getting users to basically understand your content a lot easier if you follow some of the web accessibility guidelines and the accessibility rules. People that use uh, technology, like low bandwidth technologies, to people that have data limits, especially those of you which are working with mobile, mobile devices, some of you will have uh, limits on the amount of data that you have available. A lot of the techniques that we can use for web accessibility help in reduce the amount of data that we have to transfer. So uh, doing things, for example, like using less images overall, uh, making images available in other formats can help reduce things like data limits. And then also, just generally, users that don't use the internet as often will benefit from having accessible websites. So I haven't talked about what accessible websites are yet. I haven't talked about the law or anything. I've just basically said there are groups of users on the internet that could potentially benefit from creating accessible websites. As businesses, though, kind of you, one or two of you have already mentioned this, but as businesses, uh, having an accessible website obviously means you're going to have 
more customers available to view the content on your sites. Uh, your sites generally will be easier man to manage. So one of the reasons for that being is that one of the, the key aspects of accessible web design is actually making sites that are HTML and CSS based. Rather than using tables and cells to create websites, old fashioned uh, web design techniques, actually using XHTML and CSS allows you to actually separate your content and your design out and make sites a lot easier to manage because you're only managing a lot of the time just the content or just the design, one or the other, and not both things at the same time. These modern day development techniques also a lot of the time ensure future compatibility with future browsers. So as, for example, Microsoft bring out Internet Explorer 8 uh, or Safari bring out uh, the new well, version 4, I think it is, of, of Safari, version 4, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then, web, then websites will, if they're complying with standards and are basically created around this accessible type uh, mindset, then basically you're creating sites that com comply with this future uh, compatibility proofing. Uh, basically, a lot of web accessibility is down to usability. Actually promoting good usability, creating good usable sites naturally become accessible a lot of time. As a business case, search engine rankings. A lot of time if you go in and you semantically mark up your code, in other words, what you do is you actually describe the code, describe your content properly by marking it up, it becomes a lot more search engine friendly. It's a lot more uh, screen reader friendly, it's a lot more assist, uh, uh, assistive technology friendly. In other words, users that are using other technologies other than just a web browser and a mouse and, uh, and a keyboard will actually be able to find content a lot more meaningful. And then we have things like your social and ethical duty as businesses to the community. I know Joyce goes, yeah, this is, this is the key thing. Actually, as a business, if you're promoting accessibility, you're actually promoting a more professional outlook or a more professional out, uh, image for yourself as a business as well. So a lot of people respect that, uh, that you're providing that social and ethical duty as a business in your community. Uh, key thing, Jonathan has mentioned, avoiding legal fees and legal cases. Yeah, potentially that's also a positive, uh, positive business benefit to web accessibility. But there are some caveats to this because... Uh, we'll look at those in a second. The other thing with web accessibility is it is the law. It has been the law. It's been the law for 10 years. Nobody cares, though, that's what it seemed like. Uh, and that's one of the caveats we're going to talk about in a second. But uh, there are estimated, you didn't say this, 10 million. I probably did, I said everything else. <laughs> estimated 10 million registered disabled users in Britain, which means.